B3.2, integrate biological knowledge to develop an informed response to a socio-scientific issue. So what does this mean? You're going to complete a report on a biological issue. From this, you will need to develop a personal response based on the information that you've collected to make up your own opinion on the issue. Your teacher may give you a list of issues to choose from, or you may be told which one you're doing, but it must be related to a contemporary New Zealand or Pacific issue. The term integration is really key here. So it means the material that you have sourced must come from different sources and be integrated within a paragraph and must be rewritten in your own words. And already your teacher may dictate what the issue is going to be or give you a list of possible topics to choose from. So the start here, where you're looking at biological concepts and processes, you will need to explain the biology behind the issue. And it must be one where you've got people who will, who will hold different opinions or viewpoints. By concepts and processes, we are looking at an idea. So for example, you might be working on um, issues of vaccines. So for that, you would look at the concept of what is a virus. In terms of the process here, it could be, how is the virus making somebody ill? Or how does a vaccine prevent the illness? You may find that there is some overlap here with the biological implications. Now you need to integrate biological and social implications of the issue. So again, you must integrate, so you will need a number of sources. The biological implications could be something good or a bad impact. For example, if you're doing fluoridation of water, we know there is a positive impact that fluoride has on strengthening teeth. Try to think of a few as this will support your justification of your opinion and recommendations at excellence. The social implications can come from ethics, environmental, economical or culture. Is this issue having a huge impact on society? When you look at the environmental Im implications, think about the impact the issue has on abiotic factors, for example, soil or water. Now you need to find some opinions on the issue. So these can be from an individual person or a group, but both of these must have a full name, not just my friend Bob. Probably the easiest way to do this is to find somebody with an opinion for and somebody against. But you can have two opinions against, but for very different reasons. So, for example, one individual might be ethically against the issue and another may be economically against the issue. Again, try and find some opinions that will help you to then form your own opinion. Now we move on to your own opinion. You must back it using relevant biological knowledge. So you have to have your own opinion either for or against. Please don't sit on the fence. Use the knowledge that you've now learned and explain why you are for or against and back it with some of the evidence that you've found. Next, you're going to make a recommendation. So this is you explaining what you're going to do about the issue personally, or it might be a recommendation you make to society or the government. So use all the pieces of information that you've gathered to make a realistic suggestion and back it with an explanation. So for example, you wouldn't suggest that each household gets two sources of water, one with fluoride and one without, so people can choose to avoid the ethics around fluoridation of water that would not be a realistic recommendation. Lastly, for the excellence, you need to justify your opinion and your suggested action or recommendation. And there are three ways to do this, but you only need to do one of them. The first one is to compare the implications. So this is gonna be easy if you've got one implication for and one against. Does one of the implications out the, outweigh the other and why? 
Secondly, you could take your action and use evidence from either similar issues or issues that have come up in another country and show how effective that recommend recommendation could be. So, for example, if you were researching, should we introduce a sugar tax on drinks, you might look at what's happened in the UK and see if it's been effective. Lastly, the third way of looking at, at the excellence is looking at the validity of sources. Now, for this, you could use the CRAP test acronym. So how old is the source you've used? How have things changed since then? How reliable is it? Can you support this source with other material? Who wrote it? How is it? Who's it aimed at? Is it a pharmaceutical company trying to make money? What's the purpose? Is it somebody's opinion or a fact? Now you need to do this for at least three individual sources. You also need to mention how that source has aided you with coming up with your opinion and recommendation in the report. And lastly, you need to include your references. So any sources that you've used, reference them. You may also include sources that you chose not to use because you felt they weren't valid. Please make sure you include the date that you sourced it and also the date it was created if you can find one with the author.